patching and seaming a silicone bust. In this tutorial, I'm going to show how to patch air bubbles and do seaming work on a silicone bust with a flexible foam core. Now, if you missed the original tutorial, definitely check it out. I'll link it on the end screen. The original tutorial covered the process of casting this bust. Now stay tuned because I'll be following up this video with a tutorial on how to airbrush silicone and of course how to do hair work over a silicone bust. That said, let's get started with the patching and seaming process. Now I will be the first to admit that patching and seaming is definitely not my favorite part of the process of making a silicone bust, but obviously a very necessary part of the process. Now, this is one of those processes, much like painting silicone, that it's as good as the effort that you put into it and as good as your artistic skill will allow. So this is definitely one of those processes that you definitely want to practice with this and make sure you understand the process well before you start patching and seaming a piece you just pulled out of a mold. Now in the previous tutorial, I started by pouring out two buckets of parts A and B of TC5130F translucent platinum silicone. This is a platinum silicone that I used to cast this bust, and we'll also be using this for patching and seaming. And this is why in that first video, I explained that you wanna have more silicone mixed up to the color that you need than you'll actually use for the casting process, because the leftover silicone from these batches will be used for the patching and seaming process. So what I'm doing here is these are the A and B components that I use to cast that bust. And in that first video, you can go back to that and check it out. I mixed up the A and B separate and got those colors exactly the way I want it. So that way, each batch of silicone that I pour from this A and B will all be one homogeneous color. So real important to make sure that you have silicone from that original batch to do your patching and seaming. Now, before we get started, here's five important points you want to remember for successful patching and seaming of silicone. First of all, you want to avoid touching the silicone part that you're about to patch and seam. And if necessary, you need to clean that with acetone. If you have any release residue from the casting, you want to clean that off. And I say acetone because that's typically what I use if I'm releasing my mold with Zip 301. But remember that solvent may change depending on the release you're using. Now, number two, you want to patch and seam as soon as possible. Bonding silicone to silicone is always best when the silicone is freshly cast. Old silicone gets a very weak bond. Number three, you want to work in small and very accurate batches and measure by weight. You want to be as accurate as possible so that your silicone cures, especially in those very small batches. Number four, you want to make sure that you patch and seam with the same silicone that you used in the casting process. This ensures that everything cures to the same shore A value and also has the best chance of bonding to the original silicone material. Number five, you want to make sure you thicken your silicone with a compatible thickener or thixotropic additive. If you don't use a compatible thickening agent for your silicone, it can result in low tear strength or cure inhibition. Now, when you're applying new silicone over old silicone, it's inevitable that you're going to have to add some texture. So one of the tricks I use for that is I tear up some old TC266 foam. This is some leftover foam from another cast. And I make a little stipple sponge out of that foam. Real important to use polyurethane foam and not latex foam. And now I'm going to dispense some alcohol in a little mixing cup. I'm using 91% here, but typically I really prefer to use 99% alcohol because it dries much faster and lessens the chance of making your silicone sticky on the surface. And then what I do is over my silicone, once I've got my thickened silicone, here's a little mound of thickened TC5130F that I put on a piece of foam core board. And once you've spread out your silicone over your seam, when you need to texture it, you can use that uh, sponge that you've made dipped in 99% alcohol to texture that surface. And what's happening here is the 99% alcohol or 91% in this case, acts as a lubricant to keep the sponge from sticking to the silicone. And ideally you wanna do this right before the silicone hits its cure, right before it's about to gel. That's when you get the best texturing effect. But real important, don't use a latex makeup sponge or that will inhibit the cure on the surface of the silicone. 
So with that out of the way, let's move on to removing the excess silicone. So seaming our silicone, when we cut away that silicone from the edge, that is what we typically refer to as seaming, the act of cutting that away and then touching up that edge that we've cut to make it match the surrounding area. That is the basics of seaming. And this is one of the reasons why ideally when you're making a piece like this, you want to make sure your seams are located in areas that are easy to clean up, easy to access, and relatively smooth surfaces that are easy to match that texture when you're blending everything in later on. Now here I'm just cutting away that uh, extra silicone with a scalpel. You can also use cuticle scissors. But the main thing here is when you're cutting this away, you want to make sure that you're cutting this away so that you remove a little bit of the silicone. So just to give you an idea what this looks like in cross section. So let's say this is the scalp of my bride of Biddy here. And that's the seam sticking up out of her head. So when we go to cut that away, what we want to do is if we're pulling on that little piece of silicone and apply just a little bit of pressure, what it does is it pulls that silicone out so that when we cut that with a scalpel or with our cuticle scissors, we actually cut it as close to that base as possible and even create a slight indentation where the seam was. And that is ideal. If it's flush, it's much harder to hide. Ideally, you want to have a little bit of a trench effect going across that seam. So your seam, instead of being a raised area, is slightly indented. And that allows a place for you to put the new patch material, the new silicone, and then texture it to match the surrounding area. And now we're ready to mix up a small batch of silicone patching material. And remember, this is left over from that original batch from the casting that we did. And you'll notice that both of those parts are labeled A and B. I've measured this out into buckets and pigmented this. And you want to make sure you stir those up before dispensing that small batch. And that ensures that everything is one uniform color. And this is just a small batch of about 40 to 60 grams. And it's also important to remember that TC5130F is normally a pourable liquid. So we're going to add 1% of SC5001 to that. And what that does is convert that from a pourable liquid to a thixotropic paste. So you see before that reacts, it has a nice pourable consistency. And once the thickener reacts with the silicone, it's going to give us a thixotropic paste. And that's ideal for being able to patch and seam, where we want that to stay put on a vertical surface and not run and drip. So there we have our nice thick trowelable paste and we're ready to start seaming. Now, real important to remember your working time here, you have seven to eight minutes of working time, so you wanna move fast. And typically for seaming, I like to use a brush dipped in alcohol to keep it from sticking. Also, uh, tongue depressors, you can actually break those in half to make uh, tools that get into hard to get areas. And also a dental spatula is really handy. And the seaming I'm gonna do here is gonna be really basic just for the sake of this video. But uh, the main thing we're gonna do is again, fill in that little trench and scrape away any of that excess silicone. And I'm gonna do some fairly broad movements here just so you can see what is happening on video. This is one of those techniques that's uh, much easier to do than it is to film yourself doing. And once I scrape back that area and level everything out, then it's going to be ready for texturing. So I'm going to just fill in that area and feather it into the surrounding area and get it as smooth as possible. And then I'm going to come back to that after I do some of the other areas because I like that to be at a stage right before it gels because that's when it takes texture the best. Now I'm going to go in and fill in that air bubble on the ear, just get a little glob of silicone. And again, this is why it's so important to have a good thickening agent and be able to thicken that up to a nice, thick, trowelable consistency to patch those little air bubbles. And again, your results will be as good as the time and effort you put into this. And especially the better artist and sculptor you are, the better you'll be at this process. Because essentially what you're doing is sculpting with silicone. And I am a caveman thought out by your scientists, so my patching and seaming skills are pretty uh, crude. But you get the idea. These are the basic mechanics of the process. Now what I'm doing here is I've applied a little bit of silicone along the other shoulder seam and I'm pushing some plastic material into that, just a piece of a clear plastic bag, to level that out. 
And you can do that around neck areas and things. It's a, a trick uh, Neil Gordon showed years ago in one of his DVDs about uh, how to make those little neck wrinkles and creases, make those line up with the surrounding material. Great technique. And then I'm going to do that on the top of the head. So anywhere you need that silicone to just be smooth with kind of a matte finish, you could always use a piece of a plastic bag or plastic wrap for that. Just again, make sure everything is compatible. Now we're going to come back to that one shoulder and that I'm going to texture. Even though this uh, particular piece doesn't really need this kind of texture, I thought I'd show this anyway. What I'm doing is again just dipping that piece of 266 uh, sponge foam in some alcohol and then using that to texture that silicone before it sets. So real important, keep track of your working time, keep a smartphone timer handy, and make sure you have enough time to get everything done within that batch. And again, real important to make sure you're as accurate as possible in those batches. And that way everything cures up in the right amount of time and to the right consistency of the surrounding silicone. Now this is about an hour later and we can peel off that plastic wrap and everything is good, ready to go. And now we are ready to proceed with the painting step. Now, just like with the patching and seaming, you want to do the painting as soon as possible. So we'll be covering that in an entirely different tutorial. So stay tuned for that. In that video, I'll be showing both brush painting techniques as well as airbrush techniques and a few different solvent options you can use for that process. And we'll be following that up with a video on the hair work. And some of you have probably noticed that the thumbnail doesn't match some of the video you see here. I actually cast up two different Bride of Biddy heads for the sake of this video. So one of them I did the hair work by hand and then the other one I actually went out to a wig shop and bought a proper lace wig to put on her head. So I'll be covering both of those processes in the hair video. So stay tuned for that. And as always, I'll link all the materials I used in this video in the video description. So be sure to check that out. And of course, check the end screen for the other videos, the previous video, the casting video, as well as some other silicone casting tutorials that could help you out. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. And of course, share this video far and wide because, hey, who doesn't want to make a silicone bust of one of their friends or relatives? And as always, thanks for watching and thanks for supporting the channel.